Hey everyone, this is Jessica Warren of Into the Warren and I am back with another video. I've actually been trying to do this video like three times, but my dog Victor decides to snort and scratch and wreak havoc on my living room, but I think, I think he's given up, so <laughs> I'm gonna try this video one more time. Um, I am in a different space. This is my crafting space. I try to video here when I can, but typically I have Brooke who, uh, whose bedroom is right beside the living room and I never want to wake her up. But today she is actually in daycare. This is her first week of daycare and she's having a blast. No separation anxiety. She's not upset when I drop her off. When I come and get her, she's fine. Um, and the daycare has been keeping up with pictures and updates of what she's eating and what she's doing and that kind of thing. So um, she's having fun and making friends and learning how to, you know, be around others. Um, she and I were both sick, but she's fine. She actually recovered a lot faster than I've been recovering. I still have like a tail end of a cold, but um, I think the worst of it is done. So thank goodness for that. Um, and while she's at daycare, so, if you're uh, a mom to younger children who aren't in school, you probably know daycare has waiting lists. Like, there's not enough daycares for children. And when you sign up, you have to wait until there's an opening. It can take months. I think it took Brooke three months to get in a daycare. Um, and if you hear snorting, it's Victor sleeping. He's got a flat nose. He's a Boston Terrier. But anyway, um, and so once you get in, you want to make sure like you are still in and you don't lose your spot um, and so even though I don't have a job and I could watch Brooke here at the house um, if I take her out of daycare then I'm gonna have to go on a waiting list again to put her back in daycare and then what if I get a job that I have no daycare so I'm just gonna have to keep her in daycare even though I'm home but that's okay because it keeps me it helps me stay focused on looking at job opportunities and thinking about my next steps. So um, I've been impatient. I've had freak out moments where I get a little upset and worried, um, but I am doing everything that I can to figure it out. Um, I, I'm, like some of you might know, I'm trying to get my teaching eligibility. I called them, they have everything. They said it can take up to 90 days. So it's only been 10 days. So um, I'm waiting on that. In the meantime, I'm applying for jobs that I already am qualified for um, as a place to be, to get a paycheck, to keep my family supported. Um, so I'm working on that. But of course, like you submit applications, you submit your resume. I had a, um, an interview yesterday, but it doesn't pay enough. It's like, I mean, I could probably get paid more being a cashier somewhere unfortunately but my interview went so well so um, I'm just gonna keep looking and figure it out in the meantime I'm just you know um, doing other things while I wait and one of those things is I actually got to go to the library and I have lived in this town for we bought this house two years ago and I have never once gone to the library or uh, got a library card and I am a big supporter of books if you saw my house it's filled to the brim with books I never throw books away um, I find books at thrift stores books from when I you know my mom keeps books from when I was a child um, I am a lover of books and Brooke when I was pregnant with Brooke Whenever I saw a book that I remembered as a kid, I would get it for her, like Good Night Moon and the Eric Carle books, you know, and those kinds of books that I remember when I was a kid, um, because books are really important, um, and we have lost kind of, it's sad to say that books are not as popular as they used to be because of all the technology and digital stuff, but I want my daughter to, to love to read, and reading really is so very important for development. So I got to go to the library today and I'm very excited for several reasons. Number one, in their events, they have, <clears throat> where is it? Programs for adults. So the first 
and third, I think it's either the first and second or first and third Tuesday of the month, they have the Frayed Knot Knit and Crochet Club. So you can go in, it's two hours long, you can bring projects with you to work on, and it's just like a knit and crochet group at the library. So June, oh, I'm sorry, July 2nd is the next one. So I think I am going to do that if I don't have work. Um, I might as well do something and get to know people. And you know, it's, I don't have, like I said, I, I don't meet many crocheters or knitters um, in person. So that would be something really fun to do. So I think next Tuesday I am going to do that at 10 a.m. And they also have a book club, they have a genealogy group. Of course, I have done just about all of my genealogy. I don't know what Young at Heart is, so I'm not sure what that is. And then they have um, Tiny Tyke Story Time, Mommy and Me Morning Movies, maybe Brooke and I could do that one time, Kids Craft um, Corner. So there's really cool stuff. And um, they have a kids section and they have um, a challenge that your child will read or you'll read to them a thousand books before kindergarten. And they have a shelf of a thousand books. And I got two of them so Brooke and I can start. <laughs> On her thousand books I got her Goodnight Seahorse which I've never seen before but it looks really beautiful the, the illustrations are gorgeous and she really loves color she loves to um, study you know images and text she likes to look at things and then I got peekaboo and it's like a little cutout book of peekaboo there's a ghost and some zoo animal so it's really cute so these are two books I'm gonna read with her this week um, before I take them back to the library and then I got some books for myself that I wanted to share with you the first thing non crochet or knit related is the book Frida Kahlo's garden and you guys might know that I love Frida I have a tattoo of her she's a famous Mexican artist who's passed away um, but this book shares um, a lot of her, here she is, in case you want to see what she looks like, her um, diary, sketches, her life, her home, her paintings, um, and just some of these I've actually seen in person, these um, drawings and things that she's done. Some are just like very basic sketches. You can see her in her garden back here. She was a magnificent woman with many challenges in her life. She lived in a blue house and so do I and she called it La Casa Azul. So I had a sign made for our house that says La Casa Azul with birds over my door. Um, but yeah anyway it's a really cool book. I wanted to skim through it and look at her stuff. So that's one night night reading. And then I got some books that have to do with knitting or crochet. So the first one is Knitting for the Absolute Beginner. And I got this book because there are things, basic things about knitting that I still don't know and I would like to know them. And I was hoping that this book might be, um, you know, a good way to learn those things. Um, so like stockinette stitch and all of that, I've kind of figured out picking up a drop stitch, which I haven't studied yet. Uh, sewing sleeve seams. That's a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, just kind of how to, how to decrease purl wise and knit wise, which I don't necessarily know how to do crochet edging. Um, I think the simple sweater section is going to be very helpful for me because I really do want to make a sweater. Uh, I just don't always know like all the tips and tricks for it. Um, there are some patterns in here and how to do cables, which I definitely don't know how to do. So this is something that a book that I want to go through and learn more about. 
Um, so I got that book. And the other book I got is another knitting book. And I don't know how well I'll like follow it, but it seemed like a really cool book. It is The Art of Slip Stitch Knitting. What is slip stitch knitting? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it differs. Um, it says it's a, the simplest and most versatile knitting technique, but it's often overlooked. And so I am interested to learn how that differs. And in here are some really beautiful patterns, traditional stitches. There's um, scarves. They say it's easy, so I would love to learn it. Here's some more designs. I mean, it is gorgeous. And this book is like more of like a modern style book. Look at how pretty. So I am going to take a look at that. What else do they have? This scarf is really pretty. Look at how pretty this scarf is. That's gorgeous. So I'm really excited to take a look at this book and learn the differences between what I know already and what this is talking about. So um, all the stitches and everything are in there. Look at these boot cuffs. Those are pretty. So those are the two books I got at the library that have to do with um, knitting. I haven't even looked at it. I'm like in the zone now. I'm like, oh. But anyway, that's what the cover looks like, The Art of Slip Stitch Knitting. And they had a few others that I might try. There's actually a crochet book there for like Christmas crochet projects, which I definitely want to see. And like a vintage Christmas one. I'm going to have to go back. Obviously, it's the library. They're free. You just bring them back. I mean, you should take advantage of your local library and support them and go in and get yourself a library card because why, you know, invest so much money when you can just use what you need and send it back and renew it? It's perfect. So that's that and I'm going to get into my next part of the video. I uh, went to, I was bored out of my mind this morning. I have a Michaels about 20 miles away and I said why not just go to Michaels. I haven't been there in a long time. My hair is getting so long guys. I don't know if I should cut it but um, I haven't been to Michaels in a long time and I would like to see what's what's happening I know Diet Pepsi is bad for you but my throat being sick kind of helps um so I went to Michael's and I only got two balls of yarn which is amazing and I know I shouldn't be spending money but I had coupons and it was very inexpensive but my goal is to make a, a watermelon cardigan I think or a watermelon romper and I'm still trying to decide if I want to try knitting it or I want to crochet it and make it faster and easier for me for Brookie it's one of the bingo squares but I don't know if I'd get it done in time but I still have been wanting to do it and like I told you guys before I didn't have the right color for watermelon um, so I got this Joy, Loops and Thread Joy DK, um, yarn from Michaels. Um, sorry, I had a text message and it distracted me. And I got this color. It is, hmm, let's see, coral. But I think that's a good watermelon co color. And it's DK weight. So I got that, and then to go with it is this green, it's called Leaf, which I thought would be good for the watermelon rind. So I have that, and so I got these two for the watermelon cardi or romper or whatever, but I know it's watermelon, that's basically where I am at this point. Um, I would love to do a knitted version, I'm just a little scared. so. Then, right next door to Michael's is Joanne Fabrics. My Joanne Fabrics is okay. I go there pretty often. It's small. 
Um, but the Joanne Fabrics uh, down the way is actually slightly larger. And I just was curious what they had that was different. And they really don't have a whole lot that's different. Also, yarn, your entire purchase of regular price yarn is 30% off today. I don't know if it's more than just today, if, if it's extended or not, but today it is. But I also got from Joann's, and this was 50% off or 40% off, is a um, plastic tube container to and it says it fits knitting needles and that's what I need this for I have knitting needles everywhere they're so long and I have nowhere to store them so I got this so I can get them off my dresser and I don't want them falling on the floor so I got this to hold all my knitting needles that I have um, to kind of keep them more organized and prevent them from breaking or losing them um, so I got that I think it was like I swear this was like a dollar after the discount um and then I stupidly went to the yarn section because of the coupon and I saw I really love lion brand yarn I really do I'm sure many of you do I got lion brand woolies so it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool and this is gonna have to be a Christmas project obviously the color is forest green heather and it is just gorgeous this um, yarn here you see the different shades of the greens and um, it's so like soft I got two of those and then right beside it this is what really caught my eye is this lion brand woolies and rose heather and that's so stinking beautiful and when I saw these together I thought I'm going to knit a um, hat with roses, a green hat with rose pattern on it. That's what I'm going to do with this. I got two of these and two of these. I'm going to knit them. Ooh, it got dark. Ooh. Hope you can still see me. Um, I'm going to knit with these and make some pretty hats um, to put up in my Etsy shop and maybe give one to, because I really only use like half a skein, give one to um, a family member who might like it. So. I just love these colors, these heather colors with the shades, gorgeous. So that's what I got at Joanne Fabrics. And then the other day, I've been into like learning or not learning, but um, looking at yarn bombs. And if you don't know what yarn bombs are, they are knitting projects that are in public. Um, so maybe there someone knitted something and covered a telephone pole or a bench or a fence or you know it's just it's yarn art basically it can be crocheted or knitted or woven um, and then it can have some sort of theme and then it's placed somewhere in the public eye for people to see it's like guerrilla art I guess you could say um, and I really like looking at them on Instagram. I think I'm a big lover of art. And when you do yarn bombing, it's just so like free form and cool and colorful a lot of the time and pretty. I, I just think it's neat. And there is some yarn bombing that happens in Orlando that I've seen from time to time. In this little town, not so much. But there are actually towns that um, allow, I mean, you could go out and just do it and not get permission, but you could get in trouble. It's considered graffiti. Um, some people don't care about that, but if you were gonna do a project, you might wanna do it for like, you know, for a specific purpose, like for a fundraiser or, you know, an, an awareness event and talk to your town hall and see if you would be able to get permission to do some large scale cool yarn bomb in your town. Um, so anyway, I just really have been liking it and learning about it and seeing what people come up with. And so I decided to just freeform <laughs> something just for fun. And it started out with this eye. So I just started making an eye. And then I've tied like the them together just so they don't come undone. And I just started using random yarn and building on it and it's gonna be hard to kind of show you but because it's kind of large 
but these are the ears and you can kind of see the face if it was on the ground so um, if you go to my Instagram or Facebook you'll you can see it on the ground but it's supposed to be like a bunny face like here's the nose um, but it's just something like, I don't know, it's just something I worked on on Sunday, just something random. And when it's laid out flat, it looks kind of neat. And I was thinking maybe doing like a leaping bunny, like do a body, but I'm like, I don't know. It was just like practice, something fun to do. But anyway, here you go. Here is the randomness that is me. And then I finished the crocodile, and I don't have it with me because I gave it to my nephew. It was a custom order my mom ordered, and um, she was giving it to him on Brooke's birthday because she won't be able to attend his birthday. And I made him a, I made the crocodile a birthday hat. I have tons of party yarn and eyelash yarn that I never use, so I made a party hat like with some of it, and it looked so cute that I want to like make party hats for every Amigurumi doll I make and um, it's so cute if you want it I did take a picture of it again it's on the into the war and social media so you can check it out if you would like and then the only the last thing that I have is um, this v-neck tunic that I'm working on I'm almost done with this panel I actually didn't crochet at all yesterday I um, had my job interview and I still didn't feel well and so I was watching Netflix and applying for jobs and things like that I just needed some rest but um, I have been working on it I think I have like five rows to go um, but yeah that's what I have so far I've got to make another one of these and then just sewing it up and putting edging on it but again, the colors are just so pretty, and I'm doing my best to not get this all tangled because um, once it gets tangled, it's really hard to untangle because it's so fuzzy. But <clears throat> that's the progress on that. So that's what I have today. Um, it's just been it's been a pretty good week. Just a little scary. Um, but I am really grateful for each and every one of you who has um, watched my videos and left comments and subscribed to my channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, I hope that you will become one and that you'd like to keep up with the knitting and the crochet stuff that's coming my way. I think I'm going to throw in some vintage thrifty finds throughout my channel too um, because sometimes I find some really awesome stuff and I like to share that too so if you have any questions or you want to leave a comment please feel free and I will talk to you next time alright thank you take care